You can't sit in your room moping all day. Get out! I'm only trying to help. Well, you can't. That's what I think of this. Come on, Jenny. You haven't given the leg a proper try. You'll get used to it. I know you will. No, I won't! I hate it! You don't know what it's like. It's me who has to wear it, not you. You don't have to hobble around in an ugly piece of plastic. Oh, please. There's no point to this. We've got to try and... We've got to try. Just go away and leave me alone. Liam, it's Dad. You're going to be fine. Hello, Dr McGuire. Hello. We'd like to ask Liam a few questions, if that's OK. Well, uh, yes, of course. But take it easy, yeah? It was a big operation. He's still groggy. Hello, Liam. I'm Detective Constable Catherine Foster. <coughs> Morning. Hi. So don't tell me, you've either won the lottery or rear of the year. Almost. This arrived from the solicitors this morning. One of my patients has left me some money in a will. Well, who'd leave you money? Edna, bless her. Who? <laughs> Edna. She was the one that I was with when she died. Oh, it was really strange. She knew she was going to go and she just wanted me to be there. She didn't have anyone else. She was a widow and her only son was killed in a car crash. Well, go on then, how much? Ten thousand pounds. Ten grand! Wow! Um, what are you going to do with it? A sports car? Round the world trip for two? Hint, hint. I can't keep it, Katrina. What would people say? Anyway, she specifically says that the money's to be spent on the practice. Oh, right, time to get started. Hello, Mr Finch. Hello, Jenny. Good morning. Hi. Well, you're nice and early today. Do you want to go straight up? Thanks. Come on, then, Jenny. I can do it. You're still not wearing the leg, Jenny. She won't wear it. I've begged her and begged her, but we're not getting anywhere. That's not fair. I have tried, but it's so ugly and it's painful when I put it on. I'm not wearing it. OK, don't upset yourself, Jenny. I'm sure I'll be able to help. I wouldn't bet on it. I'm sorry. But you can understand how she feels, can't you? I mean, is this the best the National Health can come up with? Looks like he's fallen off a shop dummy. There must be something better you can do for her. Uh, you've been over this with the hospital. The technicians in the prosthetic department made it very clear. This is the only type of leg we can offer you in this health authority on the NHS. I know there are more attractive artificial-looking limbs, but... You mean those legs made of silicon? I know, I've seen them up at the hospital. They're fantastic. I squeezed one and it felt, felt soft, like, like skin. The trouble is they cost an awful lot of money. About £6,000. People like us haven't got a chance, have we? A leg like that would make all the difference to Jenny. It looks real for a start. Can't you persuade them that she's a special case? I'm sorry, I know it seems unfair, but... Well, unless you move to another health authority or pay for it privately, I'm afraid there's no other way. Move? I'm out of work. Where are we going to find six grand? Down the back of the sofa? I know this is going to be difficult, but I'd like to go over what happened the night you were attacked. Something may come back to you. It was dark. You were outside Riverside when somebody came up to you. Had you arranged to meet someone? Perhaps there was an argument. But do you know anybody who might want to hurt you, Liam? I'm sorry, my head. I, I can't remember. OK. Let's leave it there for now. If he says anything... I'll let you know. OK, could you just move that for me? Mm, it does look tender. But that's perfectly normal. Look, don't worry, Jenny. Once the skin gets stronger, it will get easier. Oh, I hope so. I don't think she can take much more of this. 
Oh, she's changed so much since the car crash. She used to be such a happy girl. Now she refuses to go out, friends call and she won't see them. Just stays shut up in her room all day. Jenny's been through a very traumatic time. It's bound to be difficult for her. I am still here, you know. Look, I know you've tried counselling, but maybe you should try giving it another go. You might be ready to talk now. It can really help. Talking? What good's that gonna do? Six grand is what Jenny needs, and I haven't got a hope in hell of getting it. Actually, there might be a way. Well, I'm just thinking... Well, the fact is... There is money available. See you later. Well, he said um, Liam's improving, he's conscious, and he's even managed to say a few words. Isn't that brilliant? That's great. That's all he's out of the woods, isn't it? <sighs> oh, hello again. Uh, how can we help? Uh, DCS, Leatherbridge Police. We've come here to see Dr Kwame. Hello. May we have a few words with you in private, if that's possible, sir? Yes, of course, sir. That'd be no problem. We can go in my room. Can you get the case notes ready for my next patient, mm. please, Katrina? Come through. Dr Kwame, we'd like you to come with us to the police station. We've got some more questions we want to ask you. Well, I'm terribly sorry. It's a bit awkward at the moment. I've got a whole waiting room full of patients. I'm sure I can tell you what you need to know here. I'm afraid they'll have to wait. Well, I've told you everything I know. We have a new witness who's come up with some important information. Dr Kwame, I'm arresting you on suspicion of assaulting Liam Maguire. You do not have to say anything. But Dr Kwame is dealing with an emergency. He should be with you in a minute. Dr. Kwame's been placed under arrest. Oh, Dad, it's so cool, isn't it? It's fantastic, Bob. Unbelievable. Nice to see you with a smile on your face for a change. It certainly is. You'll soon have better legs than your mum. <laughs> Mark, I've got to tell someone. I've just done something really brilliant. I feel like Mother Teresa. Yes, well, I'm sorry to bring you down to earth, but there's something you have to know. The police were here this morning. They've arrested Ben. What? I'm sure it's just procedure. They want to take him in for questioning. Are you Faith Walker? Yes. I'm Susan Barron, Edna Barron's daughter-in-law. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, she was a wonderful woman. I... Is there anything I can do to help? You can damn well give the money back, that's what. I'm sorry, I don't understand. There's no point looking so innocent. I know what you're up to. I know what all them home visits were about. You sat on her bed, listened to her drone on for hours and hours, pretending to be her best friend. It was a trick to con her out of her money. I would never do anything like that. You made Edna change her will. Three months before she died, she suddenly decided to give it to you. Practically a stranger. I think most people would find that pretty odd, don't you? I hope you've got a good lawyer, because I shall challenge this will in court if necessary. I'm going to make an official complaint about you. Mac. Hiya. It's Ben. He's been arrested. What? He's at the police station right now. Two officers came and took him away. Arrested? It's the same detectives that are investigating Liam's attacks. But... I know. I know. Yeah, OK. Thanks, Jed. Jenny's been so down about the situation, I... Well, I just got overexcited. Well, if that woman does make a complaint, there's going to be an investigation. And if she challenges the will in court, you could be liable to return the money. 
I think you're going to have to tell Jenny Finch you won't be able to have the new leg after all. I can't. You have to. Faith, you can't single out an individual patient for a special gift like that. It's against practice policy. It's not even ethical. We'll have a queue of patients begging for handouts. You really should have spoken to Kate first. I was going to, but... I know you mean well, but it is highly unprofessional. So you've got a description. I can't see what that's got to do with me. <laughs> really? Because there was one thing the witness was absolutely sure about. The man who was fighting with Liam was black. There's no doubt about that. And what does that mean, exactly? Hmm? That it was me? Because I'm the only black man in Leatherbridge, is that what you're saying? Of course not. Because if you're going on the evidence of someone who simply said they saw a black man, you're sailing a little too close to the wind, wouldn't you say? I'm not sure what you mean, Dr Kwame. Oh, you know exactly what I mean. Or are you whiter than white? Can we get back to your statement? No. I don't like the way this interview's going. I've changed my mind. I would like to call my solicitor. Look at this girl on a bike, Jen. You'd never know. Hey, you can go skiing, rock climbing, <laughs> even paint your toenails. <laughs> Oh, I'll go. That could be you, Jen. I just have a look at the brochures now. Hi, Faith. Oh, come in. Sit down. I'm... I'm very sorry, but there's been a problem with the funds. What do you mean? What sort of problem? Jenny's still going to get the leg, isn't she? Isn't she? I'm sorry, but the money isn't available after all. I want to know what's happening. I'm afraid I don't know. He's being questioned at the moment, that's all I can tell you. God, this is madness. We've now had two witness statements linking him to the attack. We can't ignore them. We have to eliminate him, if we can. I don't believe it. Why? What's happened? I thought the money was available, but I made a mistake. <laughs> what do you mean, a mistake? We've been celebrating here! I really wanted to help, but I, and I feel terrible. I, I made a rash promise on the spur of the moment. I had no authority. I really am very, very sorry. Well, thank you for coming round anyway. What sort of explanation is that? You had no right to build Jenny's hopes up. She's only a kid. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Look, I'm angry too. I wish I could explain more. I really thought I could do something to make a difference. I'm not interested in your excuses. You brought a lot of grief to this family. Well, you might as well hang up that uniform now because I'm not letting you get away with it. Jenny, I'm so it's sorry. It's your fault. You shouldn't have let me go with Uncle David. I should have been in the car safe with you. I'll never forgive you. I'll be honest with you, Dr Kwame. Everything seems to be pointing in your direction. I mean, you said hello to Liam. Then a few minutes later, a black man matching your description is seen struggling with him. It could be coincidence, of course. But it does seem strange that only a few days before Liam was attacked, another witness saw you arguing with him on his father's doorstep. Doesn't look brilliant, does it? This is ridiculous. Why are you wasting my time? It wasn't me. I didn't touch him. Anyway, what possible reason could I have?
May I come in? It's important. There's something you should know. Well, you can see I'm busy. I know this is a difficult time for you, but I wanted to set a few things straight. You came into the surgery this morning and you accused me of stealing from Edna, which is something I'd never dream of doing. As a result, you've put my position at Riverside in serious jeopardy. My job means more to me than anything. Do you know the trouble you've caused me? You know what I've just had to do? I've let three people down very badly. There's a girl crying her eyes out right now and it's all because of you. I don't know what you're talking about. You're the one in the wrong here, taking advantage of a sick old woman. That isn't true. I was as shocked as you were when I found out about the money. I had no idea Edna was going to leave me anything. Well, it's not right, is it? I'm her only relative. I'm her son's wife. You've only known her a couple of months. How did you find out about her savings? She wasn't rich. She had a bit of money she'd stashed away over the years. You must have really wormed your way in to find out about that. I didn't worm my way in. I was doing my job. Edna was lonely and ill and I looked after her. I was kind to her. She liked me. That's why she left me the money. Anyway, where were you? From what Edna told me, you were hardly the devoted daughter-in-law. You never even came to see her. The only people she ever spoke to were me and the home help. Perhaps if you'd been a little nicer to her, maybe she'd have thought more kindly towards you. So that's what she told you, is it? I wouldn't believe everything that old woman said. She never missed a chance to put the knife in. I can see it now. I was a cow, so it was all right to take the money. Nurses don't get paid much, do they? You've probably spent it already. No. I wasn't going to keep a penny. I wanted to help a patient, a teenage girl who lost her leg in a car crash. But there's no chance of that now, is there? I don't understand. I'd actually dare to think she might ride this again. Fat chance she's got that now. Oh, Neil, this is awful. Jenny blames me for everything. Oh, come on, Carol, don't be daft. Jenny wanted to go with David. She always begged to go in his car. She has to have someone to blame. She's angry, that's all. We all are. She's crying her eyes out upstairs. Could we get a loan, do you think? Who'd give me one? That nurse is to blame. How could someone in her position have done this? I'm not letting this go, Carol. Oh, Neil, don't go taking it out on her. It's her fault Jenny's up there crying her eyes out. We were all right until this happened. But we weren't! Neil! This is what Edna left me in her will. They're not even real. A handful of plastic pearls and a few paste brooches worth a fiver, if I'm being generous. I don't know why the solicitor didn't just chuck them in the bin. Perhaps they're of sentimental value. I'm sure Edna wouldn't hurt you deliberately. You are joking, aren't you? After Michael died, she didn't give me the time of day. It's five years since the accident. I know she was his mum and she was grieving. But he was my husband. I loved him too. I was so lonely. Suddenly, it was just me in the house, on my own. No one to cook for, no shirts to iron. But Edna never called. She never cared about me. Still, at least she'd be happy now, back with her precious son again. It's not fair to talk about Edna like that. She's not here to defend herself. Look, I know you two didn't see eye to eye, but she hated the rift. Did you never get on? I wasn't welcome. Michael had a girlfriend before me. They were childhood sweethearts. Edna always thought they'd walk up the aisle together. And then Michael dumped her and married me. And she never forgave me. I tried hard to please her, but she didn't want to know. It can't all have been Edna's fault. Maybe, if you'd wanted children, 
Edna longed to be a grandmother. I did want kids. I wanted them more than anything. But Michael wouldn't let me. He was so selfish, he couldn't bear anyone else to be the centre of attention. But of course, he never let his mum know that. So I was the miserable shrew that had deprived her of grandchildren. I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't realise. This isn't about me, is it? Maybe Edna did hurt you, but do you really want to make me suffer just because she treated you badly? It's not my fault. You've accused me of stealing. I could be in a lot of trouble and I've done nothing wrong. You've got to tell me. Are you going to make a complaint about me? I don't know. I need time to think. Why are you doing this to me? I'm not going to keep the money anyway. It's not about the money. It's the final insult. She had one last chance to show she cared and she blew it. Spiteful old bag. It's Nurse Walker. I want to make a complaint about her. She's told you about the leg, has she? You know about it. Mm. Please. That girl should be sacked. My daughter's having a nervous breakdown about this. Nurse Walker made a smile for the first time in months. She gave her hope and then she smashed it down again, all in one day. Mr Finch, Nurse Walker made a mistake this morning. And I can only apologise profusely on behalf of Riverside for her, shall we say, overzealousness. Of course, your daughter's upset. I can understand that. But she will recover. She's recovered from much worse. I think you'll have to agree. Making a complaint isn't going to help, Jenny. But I think you will find it will be a waste of your time and energy. That's all right for you to say, but what's Jenny going to do now? Mr Finch, with prosthetic limbs, there's always going to be a certain amount of discomfort. The main difference between the NHS leg, which Jenny has, and the new silicon one is cosmetic. I know it seems very unfair that other areas are able to provide this new leg, but unfortunately, Leatherbridge doesn't have the funding as yet. So I'm afraid you're just going to have to persevere for the time being. Get on with your lives. I just... I just feel so useless all the time. Come on, there's lots you can do. How about involving the school, doing a bit of fundraising? It's not as though you have to rush out and buy the leg tomorrow. And there are good medical reasons why you should wait. Jen is still growing. She could grow out of a new leg in six months. Have you considered that? I suppose you're right. You obviously care very deeply for Jenny. I'm sure both you and Carol will get her through this. Well, what's going on, officer? How long am I expected to wait? I gather you've spoken to Jenny Finch. It was horrible. It'd have been better if she'd have shouted at me or cried, but she didn't. She just turned away in disgust. I was so angry, I went straight round to Susan Barron to tell her exactly all the trouble she'd caused. Oh, Faith. You really can't go upsetting any more people. I've just had Mr Finch in here wanting your head on a plate. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Don't worry, I managed to calm him down. Mrs Barron's here. She wants to see Faith. Nurse Walker, I've been doing some thinking since I saw you and... There's something I want to say. It was cruel of Edna to cut me out of her will. I believed that before all this and still do. But whatever Michael and Edna did between them had nothing to do with you. It wasn't your fault. 
I was angry with Edna and my selfish, weak husband. Not you. It's all right. Don't give yourself a hard time. I know your side of the story now and I can understand why you were so upset. I do want to put things right. I'm not going to make a complaint. Edna wanted you to have the money. I, I just have to accept it. Thank you. I'm glad you're not taking things any further. Spend it wisely, eh? I'd better go then. No, don't even think about it. I'd like to believe you're innocent, Dr. Kawami. And if you are telling the truth, there's a way of proving it very quickly. We'd like you to take part in an identity parade. Is that really necessary? You don't have to take part if you don't want to. But if you do refuse, then it wouldn't look too good, would it? 